रहीम द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज टोटल हाइपोटेंशन टोटल हाइपोटेंशन इज एक्चुअली इंक्रीज ब्लड प्रेशर इन हिपैटिक पोर्टल वेन्स विच इज अकरिंग एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ इंक्रीज रेजिस्टेंस टू द पोर्टल फ्लो नॉर्मल ब्लड प्रेशर इन हिपैटिक पोर्टल वेन इज फाइव टू सिक्स एम एम ऑफ मर्करी एंड इन पोर्टल हाइपोटेंशन द ब्लड प्रेशर कैन राइज अप टू टेन मिलीमीटर ऑफ मर्करी टोटल हाइपोटेंशन इज मोस्ट कॉमनली सीन इन क्रोनिक लिवर डिजीज एंड लिवर सिरोसिस इट इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट कॉमन मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ क्रोनिक लिवर डिजीज विच प्रोड्यूस एसाइटीज एंड वेरिसल ब्लीड अपार्ट फ्रॉम द क्रोनिक लिवर डिजीज एंड लिवर सिरोसिस देर आर मल्टीपल कॉजेज ऑफ टोटल हाइपोटेंशन दीज कॉजेज कैन आइदर बी प्री हेपैटिक दे कैन बी कन्फाइंड विद इन लिवर और दे कैन बी पोस्ट हेपैटिक so pre hepatic causes of portal hypertension include portal vein thrombosis narrowing of portal vein whereas hepatic causes of portal hypertension include liver cirrhosis polycystic liver disease and metastatic malignant disease in the liver moreover schistosomiasis and fatty liver also predispose to portal hypertension post hepatic causes include post hepatic thrombosis or Bird Chiari syndrome. Moreover, diseases of the heart such as constrictive pericarditis and right heart failure can also result in portal hypertension. So, the primary cause of portal hypertension in liver cirrhosis is resistance to portal blood flow. One of the reasons for the resistance is formation of nodules and fibrosis resulting in scarring. So, the nodular and the scarred texture of liver. compresses the sinusoids resulting in increased resistance which ultimately leads to pooling of blood in portal veins and portal hypertension is the outcome moreover sinusoidal contraction is also known to play a major role in the resistance to portal blood flow so what happens in this case is the damage to endothelium in sinusoids results in in release of endothelin 1 and angiotensinogen both of these factors result in vasoconstriction whereas there is inhibition of release of nitric oxide from endothelial cells so this inhibition results in loss of dilation resulting in sinusoidal constriction which adds on to resistance to blood flow resulting in pooling of blood in portal hepatic vein resulting in portal hypertension so as you can see here this is a portal triad and these are the sinusoids which are carrying the blood to central vein so what happens here is that once the nodules are formed these exert pressure on the sinusoids resulting in decreased blood flow moreover there is contraction of sinusoids which narrow the lumen of sinusoids resulting in an increased pressure in the portal veins so the resistance to the blood flow within the sinusoids and in addition to this since there is hyperdynamic circulation in chronic liver disease there is increased blood volume in systemic blood vessels so there is increased blood return from these splanchnic vessels adding on to portal hypertension so what does hyperdynamic circulation mean hyperdynamic circulation means abnormally increased circulatory volume due to systemic vasodilation since there is vasodilation in chronic liver disease and liver cirrhosis there is increased pooling of blood in systemic blood vessels and the blood flows across swiftly so the clinical consequences of portal hypertension is ascites which is accumulation of fluid within peritoneum there is activation of portal systemic shunts and there is congestive splenomegaly so ascites means accumulation of excessive fluid within the peritoneum this fluid must be greater than 500 ml to become clinically significant the ascitic fluid is mostly serous which means it is clear and it, it is composed of water and proteins the concentration of proteins is mostly less than 3 mg per dl and the protein present in ascitic fluid is albumin there might also be scant mesothelial cells and the presence of neutrophils indicates infection red blood cells are often seen in ascitic fluid in cases of 
intra-abdominal cancer. So how does this acidic fluid accumulate in the peritoneum? So first of all, there is disturbance in the Starling's forces because of the contraction of sinusoids. What are the Starling forces? Let's say this is a blood vessel and there are two kinds of forces present in the blood vessels which help to keep the fluid inside these blood vessels. First is the oncotic pressure which is driven by the increased proteins in the blood that shift the fluid from extravascular to intravascular compartment. Whereas the other force is hydrostatic pressure. So increased pressure within the blood vessels shifts the fluid from intravascular compartment to extravascular compartment. And in case of liver cirrhosis, both of these forces are disturbed. There is decreased oncotic pressure due to leakage of albumin into peritoneum and there is increased hydrostatic pressure due to constriction of sinusoids. So disturbance in the Starling's forces shift the fluid from intravascular compartment to the extravascular compartment which is space of dis in this case. So let's say this is the sinusoid which is lined on the inside by endothelium and these are hepatocytes. So these are hepatocytes. This here is the sinusoid. These are the endothelium lining the sinusoids and this here is the space of dis. So what happens as a result of disturbance in the Starling's forces is that the fluid shifts from sinusoids to the space of dis. This fluid from space of dis is drained by the hepatic lymphatics into thoracic duct. So in cases of liver cirrhosis, the thoracic lymphatic drainage can reach up to more than 20 liters per day. Once the fluid leakage exceeds the limit of the thoracic duct, the excessive fluid leaks into the peritoneum resulting in accumulation of fluid in the peritoneal cavity causing ascites. The next consequence of portal hypertension is portosystemic shunts. So portal hypertension results in the pooling of blood vessels and cause reversal of blood flow to systemic circulation. This is accomplished by the activation of the collateral vessels, formation of new blood vessels and venous bypasses. The sites of formation of these bypasses are within and around the rectum. As you can see here, the bypass is also formed at esophagus and stomach's junction. Bleeding often occurs from these viruses resulting in hematemesis. Hematemesis means blood vomiting. The variceal bleed constitutes a medical emergency and requires ligation of these vessels. Bypasses are also formed in retroperitoneum which include Splenorenal and gastrorenal shunts. This here is a splenorenal shunt and this is a gastrorenal shunt. Moreover, there is formation of a shunt between umbilical vein and abdominal wall vein. As you can see here, this is the shunt we are talking about. And the dilations of subcutaneous vein in abdominal wall can also be seen. This pattern is known as spider angioma and it is also known as Capet Medusa. Portal hypertension can also result in congestive splenomegaly. Since there is long standing congestion due to pooling of the blood, the blood also starts to pool inside the spleen. This pooling of blood results in congestive enlargement of spleen known as splenomegaly. Congestion of blood inside the spleen can result in sequestration of blood components resulting in thrombocytopenia and more dangerously pancytopenia. Thrombocytopenia means deficiency of platelets and pancytopenia means deficiency of all the components of the blood which includes white blood cells, red blood cells as well as the platelets. So this concludes our discussion about portal hypertension. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section. Thank you.